Uh, two very different teams, actually. Not a lot of similarity between this at all. Uh, just one Pokemon in common across the whole uh, match. That's going to be the Incineroar, but Fevzi rounding it out with that Registeel Landorus that the European players have been really tapping into. The GMAX Blastoise that yeah, I think yeah, some of his team building group were really leading the charge on. The Rillaboom and the Thunderous as well to round out his team. And then on Enrique's side, picking up a bunch of these Pokemon from the scene only once. There's that Garchomp, there's that Celesteela, there's that Ferrothorn. And we just saw how good that Garchomp and Celesteela were yesterday. I mean, they're such strong Pokemon, and I'm really excited to see how they pair up against this team with Fevzi with a lot of these top usage mods. Uh, we learned a little bit more about Garchomp earlier on, so you know should be able to try and see if Enrique can push it all the way and, and make the most of it. But like you said, he's got a lot of unique picks. He kind of fills out the uh, appears only once section with the Celesteela and the Ferrothorn as well. Um, but there's you know there's got to be answers to that, and, and I think Fevzi's probably taken a look at this team and, and already started to think of a game plan before even heading into game. So um, the big question on my mind. Are we going to see G Max boss to us again? <laughs> You're so I already knew where you were going with that as soon as you <laughs> said you had something on your mind. I, I already know it's that Blastoise, but the way to find out, let's get into the match, see if we can see something happen with this Blastoise twice today. I feel like we were really fortunate to see it earlier. Unfortunately, not making the impact we wanted to see, so maybe it can be brought again and being able to redeem itself, but not with this lead here. So on Enrique's side, there is going to be that Tapu Fini that was so strong yesterday with that Grim Snarl, and it's going to be against this Double Intimidate, this Landorus, and this Incineroar, though it's not going to be doing too much in face of this special attacker, Tapu Fini. Yeah, when you bring the Double Intimidate lead, you really want to see a, a very powerful physical attacker. Like, yeah, I mean, it's going to help with those Spirit Breaks, potentially, but the Spirit Breaks uh, aren't going to be the biggest concern. You've got to find a way to get through the Tapu Fini. Fevzi's just broken my heart already. <laughs> no Blastoise in the selection, so uh, still have to wait another round to see Blastoise doing uh, its fine work. But, you know, looking at the options he's got to try and deal with this Tapu Fini, something that you have to respect because it can just swing games from the back. Oh, for sure. And I know you're heartbroken not to see that Blastoise, but there was that Thunderous, which is something that I've been keen to see it used. Last time we got to see it, Fezzi bring the Thunderous wasn't really utilized too much, so it might be interesting to see how it fares in this matchup against this Tapu Fini. And Incineroar, just looking to give a safe startup to this Landorus, is going to fake out into Enrique's Grim Snarl here, get a Sword Stance, but Enrique going right on the offensive with this Tapu Fini with a huge Muddy Water, is going to connect on both of these Pokemon and going to get the accuracy drop onto this Landorus as well. And both Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the accuracy drop completely negated by the White Herb, but that's a whole lot of damage coming down from the Muddy Water. I mean, it's a double super effective, um, of course, on both. So, I mean, it's, it's being able to to cause a lot of problems, but now the Landorus is going to try to cause some problems of its own, uh, being able to to set up a little bit there. Uh, certainly the the order of the day, I think. Um, and now it's going to try to set up even more. Wants to just land knockouts on knockouts. I mean, it's got to be something down onto this Tapu Fini, I think. Or there's got to be an answer coming to the Tapu Fini, as you can't just let it muddy water you over and over again. Of course, the Tapu Fini being something that pressures both of these Pokemon so much. So definitely something you want to be taking care of. But with that Sword Dance boost is definitely something that can help deal with it even more. And Fevzi looking to preserve that Incineroar and maybe get a nice special defense boost on that Registeel is going to be swapping that in as we see our first Dynamax of this match. And guess what? It's a Dynamax Landorus. <laughs> That's been very, very common to see over the course of this tournament, but it is so impactful. And we talk about the position that you want to be in with it. Yeah, you want it to be full health, but at least you've got the Swords Dance. So you may just be able to start stacking up boosts to make up for that amount of damage you took in the first turn. In response though, Enrique throwing out a Dynamax on his side as well, making sure he can stay in a good position. And it's the Tapu Fini getting the benefit of that. So maybe worried about the amount of damage coming in, wants to keep itself safe a little bit, and then try and fire back with a huge max move of its own. 
course, there is going to be that reflect coming out from the Grim Snarl, so bad sword stance boost. Being slowed down a bit as it gets the opportunity to set that up, and it is going to be that airstream onto the Grim Snarl. It is going to survive here, holding on thanks to that reflect. There is going to be the speed boost instead of the max quake this time around, but this Registeel, we've seen how impactful it can be while speedy. But response means this Tapu Fini Ooh. is free to fire off attack. It does target into that Registeel though, and isn't picking up as much damage as maybe as it would like to. No, that Registeel a fantastic switch, and it often is. Uh, a lot of these players that we've been seeing with the Registeel are so adept at finding a perfect position for it to come in, knowing just how much it can take as well, and, and being able to, to respond really nicely. It comes in and gets the Airstream boost, which as we've seen has been so important for many, many Registeel players, you know, making sure it's faster and can set up things like the Iron Defense before it gets hit in return has been important. On Enrique's side though, getting that Reflect up really big, kind of helping out with that sword stance boosted Landorus that we have saw uh, get set up in turn one. And now that Landorus is going to have an even harder time. Yes, it'll still be at plus one, but at least the Incineroar is going to start cutting down on that. The Reg is still not affected though. Yeah, this Registeel going to go for that protect here. I mean, Registeel loves swapping in, kind of taking an attack, being able to protect and start getting that leftovers recovery. And Max Quake actually targeting into that Grim Snarl slot. So this Incineroar, yes, it's going to get the attack drop on to this Landorus, but it's also going to be going down here. And that's where we're finally going to be seeing this special defense boost, which is going to be so nice against this Tapu Fini. It does get the boost of the rain with this Max Geyser. So it is going to be a huge hit and is going to be picking up this Landorus at least, but not before Landorus giving its buddy a special defense boost. That's a really nice call out from Febzy. I mean, if he doesn't switch out the Grim Snarl, he gets to knock it out with Max Quake and gets a special defense boost. Just giving it a good bit of coverage, realizing you probably don't need more speed on that turn. And the special defense boost is really important for the Registeel in the next couple of turns, especially with this uh, Tapu Fini knocking about. So just making sure that, you know, any kind of special attackers are, are taken care of. Um, but this is going to get interesting as Rain is set up for the Ferrothorn, uh, and Ferrothorn is able to grind down games. Of course, it's going to struggle with that Incineroar on the field, uh, but this is the first time I think we've seen the Ferrothorn. It is. We've had the pleasure of seeing the Garchomp. We've had the pleasure of seeing the Celesteela, but Ferrothorn's been something that's been hiding from us a little bit. I'm glad to see it used here, and it being in the rain as well. I mean, the Incineroar pressures it so much. Ferrothorn not liking that four times fire weakness, but that rain being able to slow it down. And as well, it's going to be taking that fake out, but the Iron Barb's dealing damage in return. Uh, the Registeel though, trying to set up to make sure it can just body press uh, in the future and deal with this Ferrothorn. Of course, the Iron Defense helping out with the body press damage, really, really important. And that special defense boost may be getting put to the test here as Registeel just takes, oh, in the rain, look how well it takes that Max Geyser. That special defense boost so well played in this Registeel, taking that attack, but not too much. But I am loving what I'm seeing on the field here. We're seeing that Registeel facing off against the Ferrothorn, both Pokemon that love to set up and both trainers looking to start getting them in a possession, position to be able to start doing that. Yeah, it just needs to set up maybe one more Iron Defense, then it can just body press that Ferrothorn out of the game as soon as it finds that opportunity to do so. And the Tapu Fini's Dynamax has ended, and to be quite honest, um, you know, a mixed bag when it came to those Dynamax turns. A couple of uh, you know, Max Geyser's thrown into the Registeel. Um, one very good one thrown, of course, at that Landorus, but not before the Landorus had got the Registeel, a speed and a special defense boost. So, a um, little limited when it comes to just how well um, that one that one did for Enrique, but at least he's trying something and not letting Fevzi just run away with the game with his Landorus. A Registeel looking to start trying to run away slowly, going to protect, nice to get that leftovers as well as not be taking this hit. From the Tapu Fini, Muddy Water is going to connect into the Incineroar though, so the Incineroar is going to be going down, but a little bit of a free opportunity for this Ferrothorn to start setting up, and that Iron Defense sure is going to start coming out, so the Registeel is not going to like trying to hit body presses into something that has its own raised defense. Yeah, uh, this Registeel versus Ferrothorn game could be a long old like slog towards the end just trying to find uh, the best way around it. But 
Of course, both very defensive Pokemon. The Thunderous gets to come in for free, though, so I don't think the biggest concern, losing your Incineroar, is the Thunderous should just be able to comfortably start handling this Tapu Fini when it decides that's what it wants to go for. I like what Fezzi's locked in here. I like that he respects that this Ferrothorn Registeel matchup is going to be a bit of a problem. So just getting involved in that with the Thunderous a little bit, um, being able to slow that down and then turn your attention to the Tapu Fini. Maybe try and punish Enrique playing defensively in this turn. Of course, this Registeel endgame seems to be everything for Fezzi right now, so being able to deal with anything on Enrique's side to potentially pressure that is huge, and this taunt coming out at a fantastic opportunity. Registeel then free to start setting up another iron defense, and I mean, already has that special defense boost, so this muddy water won't do too much. It does miss on the Thunderous, though, so Thunderous being able to avoid that, and Registeel taking that really well. Yeah, Ferrothorn's going to try it on as well with this Registeel. Uh, but the Registeel, don't forget, just set up another Iron Defense. I do like that Enrique kind of looked at the heads up play, looking at the Thunderous, knowing it had taunt, said, well, i got to start going on the offensive. I can't just leave you um, to, to do exactly what you want. So a nice adaptation there. And, and this Registeel getting low, we know it can make comebacks from here, though. For sure. That's what it does best, being able to sit on the field, start getting set up, and then just putting your opponent in a position where they just can't take it out. And this Registeel is getting chipped away slowly. I mean, it's sitting there with about a third of its HP left, but this Fini dedicated like a couple turns of its max to trying to be dealing it down and is still just not really doing too much with the muddy water. And with being able to cycle these protects off and being able to get that leftovers recovery is definitely big. And with that Ferrothorn already being taunted, it means that this Thunderous can start going on the offensive a little bit. Big Thunderbolt into the Tapu Fini. It does connect the Muddy Water with the Thunderous this time around, but it's not really doing too much damage. No, not going to be able to get the amount of damage it wants, and the Thunder is sitting very nicely on the field. I mean, a protect for Registeel, um, well called by Enrique. We have to say he does you know, make sure the body press goes into the right target there, get some extra damage down onto the Thunderous. This Tapu Fini, you know, is just going to be looking to get knocked out by a Thunderbolt. So, um, you know, handling that is kind of all Thunderous really has to do. Um, and Registeel may be feeling that once this Tapu Fini's gone, um, you know, it's way better on the physical defensive side of things. Um, that's the only attacks it's going to be taking as soon as this Tapu Fini gets knocked out. Um, you know, it does maybe have the wiggle room to set up another iron defense. Of course, which is what is iron up here. I mean, it's Pokemon, I'll pressure it. Like the Tapu Fini, not really pressuring it too much. And we saw just how little that body press from the Ferrothorn did last time around. But Tapu Fini, not wanting to risk being KO'd, is just going to go for this Protect. As he looking to start setting up even more. I mean, there's not much more dangerous than a speed boosted, six defense boosted Registeel here. And Enrique just looking to try and slowly deal with it. But still, look at how little damage that's doing. Yeah, it's just not doing enough. I mean, that's even, don't forget the Ferrothorn doing the same tricks that Registeel gets up to. That's the Ferrothorn hitting with the uh, Iron Defense boost and the Body Press. So, yeah, the Ferrothorn did just shake off the Taunt. Uh, does kind of leave this Thunderous to have to think about it a little bit. But I think at plus six, this Registeel is probably feeling pretty good about its chances of, of getting the knockout. Plus six in defense makes this Body Press absolutely terrifying. So this could be a huge turn for Fevzi, where he just, you know, cleans up the game, forces that Grim Snarl to come in last, which just isn't going to be able to touch this Registeel. So if he gets the double knockout here, could just be wrapping up the game. This last two that he's had on the field, this Registeel and Thunderous, has been played pretty much perfectly by him throughout the duration of this game. Well, time to see just how much his body press is going to be doing, and that is a lot of damage, but Ferrothorn with its own boosts, not going to be taken out and is going to be dealing damage back with the iron barbs with this tapu fini it's unfortunately going to be going down so a lot to be asked of this ferrothorn but knowing there wasn't the taunt going into it is going to start going for iron defense as well take the opportunity outside of taunt to be slowly setting up some even more yeah, the Registeel gets a free body press, but then the Ferrothorn hanging on, responding as well. Um, you know, the Reflect going away is pretty big here as well. That now means that the, the body presses are going to be doing even more. Um, and this Grim Snarl, I mean, if it wants to throw out an attack, it's just not going to be able to hit Registeel at all. Um, I like kind of the, the respect here from 
from Febzi to say, well, you know, Re- Reflect could also just go back up. That's the other concern. Um, and this Ferrothorn is going to be pretty hard to, to deal with. So uh, Thunderous, very wise, making sure that no iron defenses come through and at least limit the damage the body press can do. And sure enough, that Reflect coming out. So making sure this Ferrothorn can be set up as much as it possibly can. But it's just going to be a body press into the Grimmsnarl on Enrique's side to put this Ferrothorn into a position where it has to do so much. And no one's able to quite pick up that KO, that Ranger Shield just hanging on. The defense is so high. And now we can just sit there, start getting the recovery. And that's a huge missed opportunity here. Yeah, that's exactly why he went for all three of the iron defenses, so he could take that. Don't forget, there's two iron defenses over on the Ferrothorn as well. So that Ferrothorn is going to be doing big amounts of damage back. But I think with the amount of damage already on the Ferrothorn, even with the Reflect, uh, you know, the Reflect and the extra iron defense that it worked in might be a tough one to get there. So I like this kind of safer play from Fevzi. Just m try and get the Ferrothorn as low as you possibly can before you even try and get the body presses in. Yes, they're not very effective, but they are a little bit of damage. And oh, he's just activated the berry on the Ferrothorn. That Thunder is just doing enough damage here to put it in range of getting that berry recovery. And it's going to be very difficult to be taking it down. And of course, this Registeel not appreciating attacking into the Ferrothorn as much because of that Iron Barb. So this Ferrothorn doing everything it can to start to just keep sticking around. Yeah, I mean, this Ferrothorn uh, is sitting on the field as, as comfortably as it can be. And, uh, you know, Fevzi must know about that berry when he looks down at the team sheet of his opponent, Enrique. So a dangerous game there. Maybe just saying, well, I've got to work through it at some point. Let's just get it out of the way now and see where we can go. The Registeel body pressing. Let's see how much it does. Ooh. It does a lot, but not enough. And Iron Barb's bringing it Ooh. right down back to that 4 HP. That seems to be the magic number here. And... Bolt, just not quite enough. Ferrothorn holding off, but just this midges of HP here, being able to target into this Registeel and finally take it out. I mean, both this, bo both big misses here, and that Ferrothorn just holding on. Yeah, but the Ferrothorn can get cleaned up by this Thunderbolt now. So yes, it's not the premium attack, but the you know working through that berry very important because um, you know it means that. If the berry was a little bit later, there would have been a problem and smart from Enrique to throw in the towel on that one. But a long old battle, a whole lot of iron defenses, a whole lot of body pressing, and just seeing how these big, beefy Pokemon can sit on the field. It, it was the tale of two Steel types. And in the end, I mean, I guess Ferrothorn won against the Registeel, but it lost against the Thunderer. So I, I, I think we're going to struggle to determine which was the best choice for iron defense body press. And yeah, in a 1v1, a lot of things could have changed Ferrothorn being able to get that recovery with like a leech seed or something and of course that was all shut down in this end game so just having to be just dealing damage and getting those defense boosts and having a lot of the options for it to be an end game just sweep being taken away from it so it'll be really interesting to see if it's brought again into this game too and how it's navigated so let's get into this game too i mean if it's another Registeel versus Ferrothorn endgame. I'd love to see how it plays out. And I mean, we are going to see that Ferrothorn to lead this time around. Not something I was expecting compared to that Tapu Fini. No, not at all. I think the the, the Ferrothorn most commonly used by, I mean, every trainer in, in the past however many years as something in the back. Um, so interesting to see it come out so early uh, and try and cause problems. And I like the change from Fevzi here, actually, uh, bringing out the Thunderous early, respecting the presence of that Tapu Fini, which was causing some problems in the last game. Uh, really, really nice. So this is definitely uh, a solid mix-up from him. And, and Enrique is going to have to maybe try and set up that Ferrothorn before the Registeel can even get set up and punish it that way around. Yeah, or at least being able to take care of the Thunderous a little earlier on to give the Ferrothorn a little bit of wiggle room to at least get set up, because that could have been a lot different if given the opportunity to get its own Iron Defense boost or a Leaf Seed or two. So we definitely interesting to see where Enrique is prioritizing. And right off the bat, it's prioritizing keeping that Ferrothorn safe. It made a little bit of appearance, but now it is going to go hide in the back as this Incineroar joined the field and get the Intimidate drop onto Fevzi's own Incineroar. 
Yeah, just trying to bait out the potential flare blitz there, I imagine. Um, you know, getting the Incineroar lower on health as well. That uh, could be really, really important. And Thunder is trying the Eerie Impulse. Uh, really wants to deal with this Tapu Feeding as effectively as possible. There's the flare blitz that he baited out, and it's not going to do much to the incoming Incineroar. Fantastic switch from Enrique, and really nice protect as well, and knowing kind of what Fezzi is prioritizing here, being able to just Eerie Impulse and slow down this Tapu Fini, so smart to not really be letting it take that damage. No, the Tapu Fini, probably going to be forced to, to switch around or play it very, very defensively for a little while, and the Incineroar can obviously buy a bit of time here with the Fake Out, that's going to help against this Thunderous, and uh, now the, the Tapu Fini given an option to, to find an answer. Ooh, that's not the one you want to mess with the Muddy Water. <laughs> I mean, it almost found an answer, but was just a couple of numbers off and is going to miss the Muddy Water on the also oh important Incineroar target. And with that fake out, it means it's not going to be taking that special attack drop from the Eerie Impulse, but is going to be taking a special attack drop from that parting shot Incineroar. Nice and safe, being able to just pivot out. Yeah, getting that uh, special attack drop could be really helpful too. Um, because it just means that, you know, these Muddy Waters are doing even less. And that's something that, you know, the Tapu Fini struggled to really put damage down in the last uh, game. Looking at it, you know, Tapu Fini is one of the, the few that can uh, really put down some of the biggest damage. Uh, you know, we don't know about the fall from Enrique, but it does get a little bit dicey when it comes to, you know, trying to find those huge hits. So uh, it does have to consider Tapu Fini as a Dynamax uh, candidate again. But you can't do it after you've, you've already had your special attack lowered by the, the parting shot. You can, I mean, I just don't recommend it. <laughs> As well, not even that. It's sitting at a negative one special attack, but there's that pressure of the Thunderous as well, being able to drop it even more. So what could have potentially been an interesting choice for it, no longer good in this moment. And Enrique going to be switching out, resetting that special attack and having that Grim Snarl join the field, which, is going to be taking a hit from this Thunderbolt, so really nice swap here. Does give this Registeel this opportunity to be setting up the Iron Defense, getting a set up a lot earlier on in this game than in the previous game, which is really nice, and it's a very, very free Iron Defense, as Enrique just opts to go for a parting shot into Fevzi's Thunderous and pivot out himself. Yeah, uh, the, the parting shots are going to start adding up, but as you mentioned, you know, the, the Registeel got in, even though it came to the field a little bit later than the Incineroar, it's going to get an Iron Defense up first, and when it comes to this kind of race between the Steel types, the Registeel was ahead in game number one, it looks to be setting up again here in game number two, there's no real answer uh, to try and deal with that, so I like that he's just getting it in, he's just trying to set it up, and this Thunderous sat in a good position once again to maybe throw out some taunts if that's what it's feeling like. Of course, the Grim Snarl on Enrique's side could throw up its screens, um, in particular the Reflect that was so impactful in game number one for keeping this uh, Ferrothorn exceptionally safe, even in the face of a boosting Registeel. Um, so I, I'm very interested to see uh, how Enrique keeps this safe. And the options uh, are going to get a little bit limited. A misstep could be absolutely fatal for these players. Yeah, a taunt's coming out from both players here. I mean, these are two end game options that are coming out really early on in the match. And both players just looking to set up theirs so while minimize the other, but huge body press coming out from Fevzi. Not going to go for any more setup, instead just going straight for the KO and taking down what was a really pesky end game thing for Enrique this time around. Putting himself in a really nice position. Yeah, the Enrique play there was to, you know, try and uh, catch Fevzi napping and, and try and catch him when he's trying to set up another iron defense with the taunt. The problem is Fevzi knows about that play. That's the exact play he was doing onto the, the Ferrothorn. So he just gets to say, you know what, I'll just go for it with the body press. He'd got the defense boost. There was no reflect in play because Enrique decided to taunt instead. So the Ferrothorn just gets felled immediately. And that's a huge loss for the end game kind of ability of Enrique's team, so uh, a lot to keep going through. Uh, this Grim Snarl just throwing out taunts, no screens as yet, and the Thunder is not falling for it. Falling for the Protect, but not the Taunt. Yeah, we're talking about all it taking is one misstep, and Luthant Ferrothorn is definitely one. And Body Press, again, I mean, there's not really anything else that this Registeel can do, but these, being able to get the Iron Defense up earlier means that these Body Presses it's forced into are doing a lot of damage. Unable to quite pick up the Kale and the Grim Snarl, but bringing it real close. But at least the Taunt onto Fezzi's Thunderous is meaning it can't go for 
any sort of eerie in pulse shenanigans onto the Tapu Fini, which puts it in a little bit of better position than it was last time, despite the fact that a Thunderbolt is not going to be much appreciated into it. No, I mean, the, the parting shot as well from earlier could be important, and Grimstyle finally throwing up a screen, trying to help out this Tapu Fini. Knowing the Tapu Fini is more scared, of course, of the Thunderous, means that this is going to help out a lot. Man, that Thunderbolt's very manageable. Uh, what would be interesting to see is how much the body press does, even though it's not very effective. Um, all about the special defense for this Tapu Fini, though. It's all about defense for the Ferrothorn and the Registeel. It's all about special defense for the Tapu Fini. Body press, though, cleaning up the Grim Snarl. Uh, certainly means that there's not really any reflex coming through. Um, you know, being a little bit delayed on those screens after throwing out taunt turns uh, means that this Registeel could just be body pressing its way uh, to victory here. This is definitely a scary Tapu Fini, though. Being able to go for that Calm Mind, not taking too much damage from Thunderbolt. We saw it last time a huge thing was that this Registeel got the special defense boost, and it doesn't have that this time around. Yes, these body, these body presses are impactful. They're dealing a lot of damage, but not going to be able to withstand what this Tapu Fini is throwing at it quite as easily, especially with the special attack boost. Well, this Tapu Fini is going to have to Dynamax at some point because it's the only real option. I mean, Incineroar could give it a go, but I think once you set up the Calm Mind, you've got to be relying on your Tapu Fini, and, and that's going to be uh, the win condition. You know, That's going to be where it's got to be start, start picking up knockouts, and it's got to start soon as well. Thunderous knows it's been weakened and is going to have a tougher time. I like that Fevzi is saving that for later, maybe when the, the Tapu Fini has been weakened by other Pokemon. Uh, and you get a little Intimidate down onto the Incineroar on Enrique's side as well. So certainly uh, a nice play, and that's just the option you have when you're when you're up in Pokemon, you have that advantage. Being able to have it in the back and bring it back out later means that he'll have the option to go for a potential Eerie Impulse onto this Tapu Fini, especially since it's now taking this opportunity to be maxing. Like you said, not really another option here, but this isn't a bad option at all. Tapu Fini can just apply so much pressure onto these Pokemon, especially with this special attack boost. And Fevzi, not wanting to risk this Registeel at all, is going to be protecting it, which is a good thing in face of this fake out happening. Max Geyser, not too surprised about that. Coming down, did target into the Thunder slot, which means this Incineroar is coming out onto the field just to get completely wiped off of the field. Yeah, Incineroar though, uh, fair enough switch in there. Probably not gonna have much impact on the rest of the game. Um, just switching that out, very, very important. Um, being able to, you know, just kind of allow the Thunderous to come back in. Maybe even allow the Landorus a chance as well. I mean, there's no way for this Tapu Fini to boost speed. Um, so you could just use that to your advantage. But the Thunderous coming in now, no special attack drop, uh, no Torn either. Uh, does, of course, have to be aware of the light screen. But in general, I think this Registeel is feeling pretty good about uh, its chances to maybe just pick up a knockout here on Incineroar. Um, and then this Tapu Fini just has to be handled by the other Pokemon on Fevzi's side. So... Uh, Tapu Fini's got, pretty much got to get knockouts every single turn of this Dynamax. Not only that, but having to target correctly with picking up these KOs, because any misstep here means that you're going to be a turn behind, and a turn behind is not where you want to be when two of your Pokemon are already KO'd, and you're on your second turn of max, so this targeting is going to be so important, and just the fact that there hasn't been a max from Fevzi yet either, and these Pokemon are taking the opportunity to set up is huge. And sure enough, that swap in, uh, that's like the swap out, swap back in after Incineroar being taken down, huge as the area impulse is finally given the opportunity to go off and breaking this Max Geyser do very little in this rain. Thunders takes this very easily and gets that Citrus Berry recovery on top of that. And it just gives the opportunity, this Registeel, to hit into the Incineroar. We've seen just how much this Registeel has boosted up. It's no surprise this Body Press was able to just take out the Incineroar like that. And this is not a good ending for this Tapu Fini. Now, this Tapu Fini is just not going to be able to fight back. The Thunderous needed access to Eerie Impulse because of uh, the taunt, so I had to switch out and come back in. But I really like the the play there to make sure that, hey, I'm going to Eerie Impulse you and then maybe try and weigh you down. But I can cause a lot of problems just by, you know, slowing you down a lot. So really nice play from uh, from Fevzi there, just mapping out the game 
very, very wisely. And now you've just got this Tapu Fini. Um, you know, doesn't have any speed boost. It's just going to have to take whole hosts of damage every single turn. And it's only got one turn of max as well. So as soon as that's over, I think it's going to be even easier to deal with this Tapu Fini. And this, planning ahead for the future a little bit, making sure there's no protects for leftovers recovery. I mean, we've seen a Tapu Fini endgame before. There's no reason to risk anything when you're so close to be advancing on through this winner's bracket. So just to protect, just a taunt. And that was the last turn of the Tapu Fini's max. We were talking about how every turn had to be impactful and hitting a max geyser into a protected Registeel isn't going to be it. So this Tapu Fini, yes, it's very healthy, but there's not really anything it can do. No, this type of Fini is just absolutely stuck right now and, you know, kind of just waiting for even the Landorus to come in and deal with it. No connect on the Thunder Wave, though. Type of Fini's at least going to be given an opportunity to try with the Muddy Water, but, yeah, even with the Rain, look how little that does. I mean, Tapu Fini is at least going to go out fighting, and I can respect that. Being able to connect with Muddy Water onto both of these targets, though, Bevzi just setting set up with another Iron Defense. I mean, the defense boosts aren't going to matter in terms of what damage it receives, but it is going to heavily matter in what it outputs with this body press and not even hesitating to just keep setting up. Yeah, maybe he wants to give the Registeel a, a moment to shine, uh, allow it to get the, the full damage body press. The Thunderous making sure that the Registeel can go before it, um, you know, making sure it's got that opportunity to, to get the win and just show why you play Registeel. This has been a Pokemon that's made, a, it's, you know, come up very, very recently. A lot of trainers finding great success with it and just showing uh, how you do it. The Registeel getting everything at once, not even getting hit by the Muddy Water. Not that the Muddy Water would have done too much, but it definitely appreciates not even taking that in the first place. No risk of accuracy drops. Does connect with the Thunderous, doesn't pick up that KO either. And now the raid has ended. The only thing that was really boosting those Muddy Waters is now gone. Yeah, the, the Muddy Waters are going to be doing even less. Did shake off the Torn, uh, might be able to, to weave in and protect. But at most importantly, uh, Fevzi wants Registeel to do it. Uh, that's exactly what he wants to see. The taunt lands again. Thunderous could have gone for it, um, but decides to give the honors over to Registeel with the body press after six iron defenses. It's still not enough. <laughs> or oh, six stages from iron defense. At least this Tapu Fini, it's been taunted. It can't be protecting, can't be setting up, and it is going to be paralyzed as well. But that body press did so little. So trying to give this Registeel the opportunity to shine and it's not quite taking the moment that it deserves after a very well fought game one and game two. Yeah, it didn't, didn't a, a little <laughs> underwhelming, I think it's fair to say. You know, I, was expect, I knew it wasn't gonna be very effective, but I was expecting maybe a little bit more. Um, I've not done my body press into Tapu Fini calculations. And yeah, Thunderous <laughs> is getting involved this time just to make sure. We gotta help out that Registeel and the Thunderbolt not doing the most after that special defense boost and is bringing it down to a point where this Registeel can Ugh. actually pick it up this time around. It's definitely close, but Thunder is helping its pal out. And Fezzi going to be taking this in a 2-0. Him and the Registeel going to be moving 